<clears throat> okay, let's try that again, shall we? Again, this is Brandon with Metalhead Minis. I'm over here cleaning some of the airbrushes that Lynn and I have and everything for the shop. Um, I was talking about before, um, I soak them in simple green for a little while just to loosen up all the acrylic paint and everything. Um, some of these airbrushes haven't been cleaned since before we moved, so they're rather dirty. Um, so soak them in simple green, take them out, wash them in good hot water and everything to get any of the residue off or anything like that. As long as you don't leave them soaking in there for you know days and days on end, you really don't have to worry about anything. That's not really going to hurt it at all. Um, then what I did was I took some cotton pads that I had, um, which are part of the cleaning supplies that you should get. You can usually get them pretty cheap um, from different locations and everything like that. I use the ones that I use for cleaning my guns. I've got another thing of Simple Green right here to wipe the parts off. I've got some pure alcohol in a squeezy bottle and some watered down alcohol also in a squeezy bottle. I've got a couple little diggy picks to get into the recesses and everything like that to dig out any paint that may or may not be stuck that I can't get to with the cotton pads. Then other than that, you just kind of scrub it down and get it as clean as you can. Which is where I left off last time with apparently no audio. So I'm sorry about that, but this is the first time I've ever done streaming from my computer, so um, lots to learn about getting it set up properly and everything like that. But what I've done is I've fully disassembled it and everything like that. And I've got all the pieces and everything laid out for both brushes right here in front of me. And I'm just going to go through and just kind of wipe everything down, see where you know additional time may or may not mean to be spent, and just try to get all the paint out from from any of the areas. Like see I put that down deep in the well and I got some more. <clears throat> so stick it down a little bit further. Grab one of the little pokey sticks and just kind of work it into some of the recesses and everything trying to dig out and loosen things um, from the corners and everything like that. I also got a pair of pliers in case something gets stuck, so that way I can just reach in and pull it out. But this one's not looking too badly. It was the cleaner of the two, so I figured I would start with it because it's the least amount of time on it. Um, these little scrapey sticks, or pokey sticks as I call them, are pretty good. Um, they're plastic, so they're not going to hurt in the metal at all. Um, you can get, let me see, dig out in there in the recesses and the cracks and everything like that, and I got quite a bit of more paint out on a little stick. Um, and it sounds silly, I mean a lot of people say you don't have to go this far into cleaning them, um, but I'm a gun nut. I clean my guns like this when I have to take them apart and everything when I give them a full service before I oil them and put them back together, so guess what? It translated back into me cleaning airbrushes. Um, there's other things that you can use too. If I have a bad airbrush, you know, a really bad airbrush, sometimes I will go in and I'll put it in an ultrasonic cleaner for a short amount of time in hot water with some soap just to start loosening everything up a lot better than I can with a scraper stick or anything else like that. You want to be careful. Um, you don't want to use nylon brushes or or anything like that because the nylon, even though it's soft and it's supposed to be safe for metals and everything, can tear up the inside of these um, these wells and everything like that and then you're going to start running into you know going through your airbrush super quick and needing to replace it because the chrome lining and everything on them are is going to come off which you don't want because then your hard-earned money that you spent buying the airbrush to begin with is either buying a replacement or sending it to Badger to see if it can be fixed <clears throat> so just depends um, but I've been working in some of the back corners and everything like that, just trying to get the last of the last of the paint. And uh, as you can see here, it's coming out slowly but surely. You just got to work it and let the simple green do its stuff, and um, just spend some time with it. I mean, airbrushes generally are not super cheap. If they are, it's probably not a good one. I do know some people that just buy like the cheap fifteen dollar ones from eBay. And when it stops working or it starts sputtering, they just throw it out and buy another one because it's $15, so why not? But when you're buying, you know, expensive ones, like these are Badger 105s, um, you spend a little bit of time taking care of them 
and they'll literally run forever as long as you clean them good, get all the paints out of the wells and any of the grooves and everything like that just to make sure that they are good. And these things are awesome. Um, they're usually used in tattoo shops and everything like that. I think we bought the three of these for like $9.99 or something like that off of eBay. And they're great because you can really channel where you want the water and everything to go instead of just, you know, dipping it or or anything like that. And it's also good because it gives you some direct control over shooting water into specific places. But this one's not looking too bad. I'll spend some more time working on the back end where the pressure valve is for the airbrush. Basically take a cotton swab. One of our little poker sticks and shove it into the back. And then, like I said before, these plastic sticks, they're not really going to damage anything. They're too soft. They're really super malleable. And as you can see, just poking it into cotton, I can bend the tips. But I want to work it and get as close as I can into the deep recesses on the back of the airbrush as well, because sometimes paint can collect there, especially if you back feed a lot or anything like that. And of course, this isn't the end-all be-all of cleaning airbrushes, but this is how I do it, and I haven't really had any issues so far with any of the airbrushes after I've cleaned them. Sometimes you do have to take them apart after you clean them and clean them again, because especially if you clean them like I do, and if you loosen up paint that may be stuck way back here where the needle is and everything because you backfed with too much pressure, um, you might spend some, some quality time sitting there scrubbing to make sure that everything comes out. But as you can see, um, I don't generally try to dip the same cloths back into the clean simple green solution or the vaguely clean simple green solution. And that's to prevent the bats from picking up any additional paint flex. And then, you know, you spent your hard time sitting there cleaning everything out and then just dumped a new speck of paint in there that may cause issues in the future. But again, this one's looking pretty good. I'm going to rinse it out. Just to make sure it's good. I'll check the front up here to make sure where the needle and everything, not the needle, where the, uh, the tips and everything sit are clean. And if you guys are commenting, I don't know, I can't see it because of the way that the broadcasting software that I use, it's taking up my entire screen. So if I have any questions that are being asked while I'm doing all this, I will get to them when I'm done with the video and uh, answer you that way if that's okay. Actually, let me see if I can't just open another window. And yeah, I'm not going to screw around with that because I don't want it to mess up like I did last time. So that one's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it, so I'm going to set it aside. The back parts of the airbrushes, you don't really need to clean if you get paint on them. You might want to give them a wipe off just to get the paint off, but there's no no real mechanical parts back here that you have to worry about super keeping super clean. Now this is the airbrush that I had in clean. Um, and I was spraying some dark Eldar stuff, and I guess I never really fully cleaned it. Because as you can see, if you look at it, it is pretty... Um, pretty horrible. There's paint trapped in there. There's, you know, all sorts of stuff and everything backed up fully. Um, hold on. Lynn's texting me. Maybe I did something wrong. Um, so it just all kind of de kind of depends, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to take scrubby cloths, put it into the well, and just using my finger and some slight pressure, just going to scrape it around the inside, try to do it a little more on camera, that's what Lynn was complaining about. Sorry, it's not the easiest thing setting up the desk with all of my computer stuff and everything else here too, but I'll see what I can do to make it better so she's happy, so we like a happy Lynn. So yeah, see, so spent a couple minutes with Simple Green scrubbing out that cup. And if you look at the amount of paint that came out on that one cleaning pad, it's pretty, uh, pretty bad. 
But this is one that I generally would have soaked in, you know, an ultrasonic cleaner and did a, a couple different cleanings on it. You know, one of a pure, you know, almost a pure cleaning solution. Um, a second one with something to neutralize that, you know, some uh, water with some baking soda or something in it. And then a third one of just pure water just to make sure that all the nooks and crannies and everything are, don't have any additional simple clean on it or simple green which is generally what I use when I clean because I think it works pretty awesome. <clears throat> now I'm out of cloths. Luckily you can buy these cloths pretty cheap. Um, you can go to gun stores and buy them. You can buy them on eBay. Um, you just want, you know, 100% pure cotton. Uh, they come in different sizes. You can get them in bulk packs. You can get them in all sorts of different things. Uh, but, let me see if I can't move this a little bit closer. Oh, we lost the camera. Sorry about that. But there, that way now you can see a little bit better. As I scrub into the cup, I mean, some of these pieces that are coming out are pretty, pretty hefty. So we're just going to keep, keep working it. We take one of our little poker sticks, jam it down in there to the recesses and everything like that. Wiggle it around. Try to get the cotton pads, you know, as far into the recesses and grooves as we can. And that's just going to help us later get all the, uh, or to get as much as the big stuff out of the way before we start tackling the little things. <clears throat> they do make micro Q-tips um, that are super awesome for this, especially if you have things that are stuck in grooves or in um, the nooks and crannies and everything like that. But during the move, apparently mine got misplaced. I'm not able to find them right now, so I'm just going to make do with what I have. Like I said, these little grabby sticks, scraper strips are pretty good because I was able to dig all that out from the channel. And literally, you just rinse it off and you're ready to go again. And just kind of work it around in all the recesses. And now I'm just showing you my hand. So let me see if I can do this a little bit better on camera. looking pretty good. And if you look down there on the where the water just came out, actually it's probably not going to be really easily viewable, but I was able to scrape a bunch of stuff and then just rinse it out from the nozzle hole at the front of the airbrush. And generally what I try to do is after I scrub things a few times, you know, I'll come back with just a clean cloth run it through everything and see how much is uh, is still coming out as you can see when I push it in there real deep and jam it in jam it into the, the recesses and everything. It's still pulling out some stuff. And if you've ever cleaned gun before, that's how you know it's not clean yet. You can use other things to apply more direct pressure. A pencil work pretty good. You know, just because I have really big fingers and it's kind of hard to jam it into narrow cups, but just uh, just sit there and work it. <clears throat> and then from icky blue and covered in stuff to that in just a handful of minutes. So, it's not bad. It's looking actually pretty good. When I look through it through this way, um, I can still see quite a bit of stuff right here where the nozzles and everything go. So, I'm going to take my pokey stick, scrape the inside of that, and then try to rinse that out through the cup. And 
managed to get it off right there. So the direct control that you can get from those squeeze bottles is pretty awesome for that. Usually helps me get a bunch of stuff out of as you can see I just wiped it off off the pokey stick and that's where it all came from. It was in there. You can also take one of them. You can wrap it up and kind of use that to jam it in there just to make sure that you're getting all that paint out. It's a clean airbrush is a happy airbrush. A happy airbrush makes happy trees according to Bob, you know, Bob Ross, but I don't think you ever use an airbrush. You can also feed it through the front using your pliers. A little bit of steady pressure. You don't want to jerk it because that will cause it to tear. But you can pull it through and that's going to help clean out the recesses really well too. And so like this one I'll take because it should be fairly clean. I'll twist it up. And then I'm actually going to try to run it through through the feed cup and then out the front and that will make sure that any of the spaces that I haven't really gotten get pretty clean but this might be kind of hard because don't have awesome tools. You don't want to use metal tools when you're sitting here cleaning airbrushes because um, they can severely damage the lining of the airbrush and once you damage the lining of your airbrush, it's pretty much done. Because then the paint's not going to flow right, it's going to stick. It's just going to cause you all sorts of problems. So just take it from me and just don't do it. Okay, there we go. See, I got to push through with the stick, grab it with my pliers, and pull it through. And see, even though I said it looked pretty clean, when I pull it through from the other way, it's still pulled out a bunch of achiness and randomness. So but now it should be pretty darn clean. When I inspect it. It's uh, I'm not seeing anything else down in the grooves. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the air pressure controller where the trigger sits give that a once over and a wipe down just to make sure it's clean yeah, you can see when I take that off it's got a bunch of icky gunk on it <clears throat> so we'll take this and wipe it in here this is really hard to do on camera because of course, the broadcasting software is a couple seconds behind the Facebook Live, and that's what I'm viewing it on. But maybe if I view it on the actual broadcasting software, it'll be a little bit better. That's much better. Now I can actually see what I'm doing in real time. So again, I'm just using up a wad of cotton up thing. Go in there, wipe everything down. Make sure the channels are clear. Dry it off real good. Rinse some water through it. Just to make sure that there's nothing trapped. Back here it still looks pretty bad, so... Take one of these. Work it in. Ideally, if I can, hook this and pull it through far enough, I can grab it. And with all these things, um, you know, once it's clean, because we are using alcohol chemicals and, and everything else, you're going to want to make sure that you dry it out real good. Um, I might because I'm using a bunch of alcohol and a bunch of simple green on it because this one's really bad and the other one was was pretty bad too. I might take them and put them in a uh, baking soda bath in the ultrasonic cleaner. 
just to make sure that there's no tarnishing or, or anything else on the airbrush after I'm done cleaning it. Just to make sure that all the channels and everything on the inside are cool or clean. Ultrasonic cleaner is probably one of the best things that I've ever gotten as far as cleaning tools go. Um, if I feel like being lazy or, you know, I just used an airbrush for a few minutes and I just want to give it a clean before I'm done with it and put it away. You know, I'm just running it through the ultrasonic cleaner for five minutes with hot water and some some cleaning solution and set it aside to dry. They're usually pretty good. But that one came out pretty good. So now we're going to move on to the final itty bitty bits. Let me get rid of some of this mess. So now we're getting into the uh, spray controllers and everything else. And those are tiny, so if I can eliminate the distractions on the plate, we'll be good to go. These are one of the pressure control valves that you see on um, or that, that controls the actual airflow and everything. And you can see these both have paint and everything that's backed up onto it and they don't look nice and pretty. So take a cloth, dip it in some cleaning solution and just go ahead and give it a good, a good wipe down. I want to make sure that these actions are not um, sticking or anything like that because that's going to cause you ir irregularities when you're trying to paint. Um, Just make sure you get it all wiped off good. The other thing that I'll do too is if I do a you know a super intensive cleaning, is I have a, a separate air compressor that I usually use for airing up my car tires, but it blows at a much higher PSI than um, the ones that I use for airbrushing do, and I will attach a nozzle to it that directs the airflow down to a very narrow point. And I'll come in and I'll spray all the airbrushes and everything out just to make sure there's no moisture where there shouldn't be. Um, another option that you have is you can put it in like a toaster oven on some low temperatures for a little bit just to bake all the all the water and everything out of them. It's not really going to hurt the plastics or anything like that. Obviously, don't put it in like 5,000 degrees, but you know, 100 degrees for 10 minutes or so shouldn't hurt it. Just check it periodically. <clears throat> But this one looks much better now too. As you can see, this is the action that I'm talking about that controls your airflow. Let's see if I can't use this. And well, it doesn't really want to show it, but I push on it there. You just want to make sure that's nice and smooth and it doesn't bind anywhere. I think that's pretty good. There's a spring in there that controls the the air and everything like that as far as the airflow. But just rinse it off, wipe it down, take care of your airbrushes, and we'll take care of you. We got one of the triggers. You know, again, occasionally you'll get paint on them because it'll backflow, or you know, you just slot paint around sometimes, like I do, because I'm not paying attention. Just uh, wipe it down, get it nice and clean. Same thing with the other one. Yeah. Some of the other pieces. Generally, these all, you know, these are, they don't generally ever get a lot of paint or anything on them because they're far back beyond the needles and everything like that. But if you spill paint into the, uh, the trigger area, like I did with this one, then it's a good idea just to come in and you know, wipe everything down, get it all nice and shiny looking again. And we got the nozzle fronts, or whatever they're called. I'm sorry, I don't know the anatomy of an airbrush, it's just what I call it. It's where the, uh, the tip of the needle and everything comes out. And we want to make sure that you get that nice and clean. Let 
You can also order replacements of these if you have an airbrush that's sat for a long time and you can't quite seem to get all the paint out. They're not super expensive. Sometimes it is better just to go ahead and replace them just to make sure you're not having any issues with the airbrushes. Sometimes even all the preventive maintenance in the world and you still need to replace pieces just due to wear and tear. See this one had quite a bit of paint in the the grooves and everything so just using a little scraper tool just work it around and then it's pretty good. That's another reason why I have a tray here in case you drop something. Um, these the nozzle tips and everything are extremely hard to clean, mainly because they're so tiny, but start with a cloth, try to trap a corner, and then come back with one of your little tools. And work it inside. And then twist it around and then pull it off and you should get any paint that are on those interior walls of that to come out. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. If you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, of course you don't have. You're not required to go out and buy one. Um, they are helpful, but if you just have a pot, just throw some baking soda in it when it's all nice and clean to neutralize any of the cleaning solutions with some water and the baking soda, and then you know make sure you dry the airbrush really good. <clears throat> Just to make sure that everything gets nice and clean and that way you don't hurt the airbrushes at all. This one had quite a bit of paint still left in it from when I was working on some Dark Eldar stuff. And shame on me for not cleaning it better, but the simple green bath that it sat in seemed to do a pretty good job loosening everything up. And then the cloths are doing a, a fairly epic job of... A, Taking it all out. Although, this one I'm just going to go ahead and replace because I can't get all the. If you see right here on the front of this one, it's kind of really hard to get to focus. There we go. You see those little holes right there? If you don't get those holes out or cleaned out all the way and everything, then you're not going to have good consistent sprays with the airbrush. And that other one, I can already tell that there's a bunch of paint and everything trapped inside of it. Um, because it doesn't want to come clean when I scrub it from this side or this side as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace that. Um, back pieces. Control the springs and everything for the needles. 
every once in a while you'll get some paint and everything on them but just like with everything else give it a good wipe down and uh, they clean up really fast as before you know try to work a uh, section of, section of cloth down inside of it if you're lucky you can grab it like that and just pull it through and again they do make tools and everything like this but I've been cleaning my pet my badger 105 for a few years now and I found that you know micro q-tips cotton swabs and a little bit of time and elbow grease and maybe an ultrasonic cleaner if it's a really bad one tend to work best and then without using tools even if they're plastic or anything besides the little scrapers that we have um, it generally doesn't cause any problems that one's good this one doesn't look horrible at all We'll wipe it down. Let's see this trash off the tray. Spring, two springs, and then those are all good. That's good. These you should never really get paint on because they're situated all the way back to the airbrush. The only reason that you'd really ever get paint on them is if it overfills or you're not paying attention or something like that. But everything's pretty clean. So now I'm going to take just the alcohol water solution. I'm going to rinse it all off again. Just to start the, uh, the cleansing process with getting the simple green off. Make some more alcohol and water solution here soon. But super dirty to relatively clean, and I don't know what have I been at this for. 20 minutes or so, maybe 30 minutes. I don't even know what time it is. Pretty simple. And then I'll go ahead and uh, reassemble one real quick just to do a function check on it to make sure that everything appears that it's looking good. I always start with the control valves. Um, another thing that you might want to do when you're reassembling it for the final time is in some of the places go in at a you know just a super tiny drop of some lubricating oil 
to prevent you know, rust or anything like that on the threads of your your tool so they don't get all messed up. There's that. We'll grab our nozzle. It sits on. There like that. Take the collar. Secure the collar down on top of it. Cat piece goes on top of that. That's all looking nice and fancy. We'll reassemble this. Especially these, since they have springs in them and everything like that, you can get what's called lube or uh, needle juice or some kind of a uh, light coating of oil um, will help. And you want that to be nice and smooth. So that goes into the back of the airbrush like this. And then tighten it down. You want to make sure that this still has its full play. Take your trigger. I always have the biggest problem with these because I have really big fingers and these are pretty delicate little small tools. It sits in there with the curved end facing backwards. Grab your trigger. Trigger gets pulled or pushed in front of it and seated on top of the air controller and then you just want to kind of wiggle it around so you're sure that you're sitting right and that's it right there you can see that I've got play and it pushes back up and then I've got play back and forward This is the locking nut for the needle. This goes on like that. And I have And that goes in like that. Lock it down and you've got a fully functioning, fully clean airbrush that should work just fine as if it was just brand new. Um, places that you're going to want to put the needle juice and everything to make sure that it stays lubed. Put some down in the cup so it can feed back into here um, and coat the needle. You're going to want to put some here in the trigger assembly just to make sure that this stays nice and smooth. Um, try to get some on that air pressure controller so they can get down into the spring on the side. The channels in here where the part of the trigger goes like this. You're going to want to make sure that it goes in there just to make sure that this action right here stays nice and smooth. Um, but other than that, that's, that's really it. That's how I clean airbrushes. Again, it's, it's kind of time consuming, but it seems to do the job pretty well. And again, if you guys have any questions, give me a couple minutes to finish closing down this video. Then I'll go through and adjust them through responding to your questions because I can't see what they are right now. But I hope you guys had fun. If you guys, again, have any questions, just let me know. And I'll get to them here in a minute.